Hello, Eliza Holliday, brush lettering artist. Thank you all for subscribing to my channel on YouTube, the letterist videos on brush lettering and the book arts. A lot of people have comments and questions. A lot of people have questions about medium and brushes, what brushes to use, what medium to use. And today when I talk about brush on fabric, maybe some of those questions will be answered. Fabric is a soft surface, so writing on it with a brush, which is a soft tool, works very well. I write on fabric with acrylic or gouache. Now fabric is great because it's inexpensive. You can make large one-of-a-kind banners. You can make custom gifts that can be put in the washing machine. Here's an apron. You can make custom one-of-a-kind or just a few t-shirts. Uh, you can use it for quilting, you can make lampshades, flags, curtains, tablecloths, all with brush on fabric. <laughs> muffins in the kitchen, sir. Seriously, where, what are the muffins and why are they in the kitchen? That's a secret. Oh. For us to know. <laughs> okay, and who's, who's Govna? Me. I am the Govna. <laughs> I like to write on natural fibers like cotton, linen, and silk. And so that would include muslin, burlap, uh, even rayon. What's a lot harder is polyester, polyester blends, or some of the man-made fabrics. They tend to either be too absorbent or too resistant to our water-based media. Now, if it's going to be something you're going to put in the washing machine, like a t-shirt, or an apron, or a tablecloth, you are going to want to um, write with acrylic paint. Acrylic paint will not bleed or run and will be completely washable once it is dry. So that's this t-shirt, for example, is... Oh my gosh, this t-shirt is older than one of my children. Now, you can do brush on fabric with a pointed tool or an edged brush. But here's some information about brushes, and this applies to all brush calligraphy. It isn't the cost of the tool or the exact brand of the tool that makes your letters look the nicest. It's actually the snapback quality. Here is a Simply Simmons brush. It's acrylic, fiber, inexpensive. But it has what I want in a tool, which is when I go around a curve and put some pressure on it, it snaps back to the original palleted edge. There's a very expensive pointed brush, a Raphael, over $30. When I go into a curve and bring it back, it snaps back to a point. So it isn't the amount of money you spend or the brand you choose, it's the snap back quality that you want. a banner for my friend Janet and it really demonstrates what I want to say about uh, overcoating the letters for brush on fabric. Janet. 
I'll take it apart here, this, this rough, take the bits and parts of it off so you can see the background is a black cloth. It's um, uh, African cotton, it's a wonderful, a wonderful surface to work on. She needs black Indian cotton. I first write it down, it's very light. Um, and I can sort of write gracefully and quickly, but it's so light, and it's, I might want that lightness for the background. Here's one that's not going to be overcoated. This one, the entire banner has been double coated, so I'm going back in this case with the gouache, the white gouache, and I'm going over the letters and adding more, more layer of pigment to it, so it gets to be a little bit of a brighter white, hopefully consistently another brighter white. And this one you can see I started over coating here and if I want to continue doing that I'll do that with all of these other letters here. Be sure not to add too much water to your gouache. Make it about the consistency of thick cream or it will run on your fabric. When you draw with a brush on fabric the stroke pulls away from the edges and every stroke you make is a little thinner than the stroke you're, you think you're making and so crisper and cleaner and prettier. So it's very forgiving of strokes. Um, my students like to see their lettering on fabric because their strokes all look nice, their hairlines look crisp. Anyway, I'm building up the pigment on the second time through these quickly made letters so as to get a darker white, a darker white, more white. And the fabric really allows me to go over those strokes happily. I also can get some overlap where I can bring this, by darkening this stroke, I'm bringing it over the, the, the T-exit stroke so I can get some sort of foreground and background to it. And that's how you build up pigment on fabric. Wash is a more finely ground pigment, it's less plasticky to work with, and it's completely water soluble in your dish or in your brush. In this wall hanging I'm using gouache, a dry brush with edge brush, and then when I get to the author's name I'm using a um, more dilute brown um, so it has a little bit of a bleed to it. When I did this test piece of fabric my gouache was too dilute. So every time I put my brush down, it blobbed and bled. So I added more pigment for the final. Here are my little padded pieces for the top, and here's that background I've been showing you, and some other elements that are part of her piece. Um, some of her favorite things. Got some birds on there. Put a bird on it, her dogs and cats. We'll see how it turns out. And this twine is going to fit right into that groove and be sandwiched between these things. You'll see. So this is a fine art piece and I'm not exactly going to be throwing it in the washing machine. But I do use acrylic for a piece this size just because it's cost effective. I'd love to use gouache, but this much gua gouache would just cost too much money. Now if I were using a white gouache on a black cloth and it was a smaller wall hanging like Janet's wall hanging, I would use permanent white and I would use Windsor Newton. That's going to be the most, have the best coverage. Use acrylic paint for those things you're likely to be throwing in the washing machine.
80s chic super size. but it was a completely black shirt. Okay, we're going to wash some brushes that are dirty. These brushes have had acrylic paint in them. First, I'm just going to rinse the most superficial paint out. Acrylic isn't the best thing for your drains. You can do this outside, it would be good. Then I'm going to get a little bit of soap in the palm of my hand. I'm really going to mash that brush uh, through and through with soap. See, I'm really, really bearing down and splaying out the fibers. And I'm going to rinse it all down, go through that process once more. And I'll keep doing this process until the pigment, the soapy pigment will get paler and paler and eventually it'll run clear. I'll stop using soap and just start rinsing it. It'll rinse out the soap, it'll rinse out the pigment, and I'll see that the brush is clean. Need just a little bit of white soap there so I know that is clean. I'm going to shape it into a nice chisel and I'm going to let it dry flat or upright and not this way, but at least flat. A lotus bowl. Hey, I'm really excited to see what you come up with when you try brush on fabric. And please keep watching for my letterist videos on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. To learn how to do brush calligraphy, you can purchase one of our 12 lively brush instructional videos on my website www.letterist.com for professionally shot, clear, step-by-step -step instruction and demonstration by myself and Marilyn Reeves in a wide variety of brush lettering styles.